Hey guys, what's going on? How is everybody doing on this amazing Tuesday? Oh, it's Tuesday. I'm like all excited. It's like a dream. Welcome to A Stairway to Survival, a podcast of hope, inspiration, laughter, joy, and everything in between because you don't have to climb alone. I am your host, Marie Updike. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube by going to my website at www.stairwaytosurvival.com. Make sure that you share and follow this podcast for up to date episodes so you don't miss out on hanging with me. Also, make sure your notifications are on so you can, um, keep updated when I go live or when I publish a podcast episode. How you doing? Sorry about that little glitch. I was, I'm trying, I'm doing this for my phone because I can't do it for my computer, which is weird. My, my sound is not working. And so if I, if it sounds weird or whatever, that is why, um, I've been able to do it for my computer, like podcasts for my computer, but some, for some odd reason, I can't lately. And I, I have to, I hate technology. You know, I am one of those people that technology is just really not my best friend. Honest to God. I, I know a lot of people are with me on this situation, but man, I'm not that tech savvy. Excuse me. <laughs> it's just crazy. I don't know. Single parent guilt is what we're talking about today. And with me being at a, as a single parent, uh, there's a lot of people out there that are single parents and they are feeling guilty a lot. I feel guilty a lot. Um, I feel guilty for many reasons that, you know, single parents can relate to, you know, doing what I do, which is, you know, I'm an author, but I'm blessed to be able to work from home. And still, I feel guilty for taking the time to do what I love to do with my podcast, my videos, my book, you know, writing, and I I feel guilty because I'm either taking too much time, um, trying to get things going with my blogs and my website and stuff. And it just it tears me up when I just like, God, I just wish I had more time with my son. And I spend a lot of time with him. But I think every parent has that kind of guilt. You know, when, you know, we, we, wish, we wish we didn't work as long or we wish we didn't have a meeting as long. We wish we was home. You know, we wish we were home with the kids instead of working or being at meetings or um, blogging or, or whatever it is you know, because our kids matter so much. And a lot of us feel guilty about that. There's many things that happen when single parents feel guilty. You know, we feel guilty that we're going through a divorce or that we're having a breakup. And so the kids are in a whole new phase of having to learn to live in two different houses. Or uh, maybe it's another arrangement that, you know, it's it's hard to take because you're used to living the marital life or whatever life you're living in. And all of a sudden you're separating from your spouse, or your husband, or your boyfriend or whatever it is. And then you have to, um, you know, then the kids are involved and then you feel guilty because you feel like you failed them. And really you didn't. It just things happen in life that we can't control. And, you know, when we have kids, you know, they're the most important thing in the world. Absolutely. Because, you know, all of our kids are the most important thing in the world. But we can't feel guilty for what we need to do best for ourselves. And whether it's, like I said, a divorce, you know, we can't make our kids, you know, feel bad for what we choose to do in our own life and you know sing, single parent guilt pa- plagues you know a lot of solo mo- you know uh 
excuse me, let me try that again because I just totally screwed up. <laughs> oh my God. Single parent guilt plagues a lot of moms and dads that are solo. You know, whether you feel guilty, you didn't stay with your ex for the sake of your kids or feel bad for needing some me time. It's important to acknowledge and process your feelings. You know, don't hide them in yourself. You should never hide your own feelings in yourself. That That's tough. That's tough stuff. You know, otherwise, they'll continue to drag you down and get in the way of living up your true potential. So the next time you feel that old sense of guilt creeping up on you, the, there's some tips that you can short circuit, short, short, short circuit those unwelcome and negative emotions. And one of those things is identifying what you're really feeling guilty about. You know, guilt usually comes from the sense that we've done something wrong, either intentionally or accidentally, or we've neglected to do something. Um, sometimes it's a sense that we fail to fulfill an obligation or live up to a responsibility. Identif identifying what's really at the root of the guilt you're dealing with will help you move forward. I have felt guilty so many times throughout my child's life, and there's no shame into feeling guilty. But the one thing that we got to do is we can't hold our guilt in. We can't make it like a week long stretch of, oh, God, I still feel guilty. We just we got to kind of work it through and move on. I have felt guilty for a whole week straight one time because I've cried over things like literally spilled milk. I dropped an actual bag of my breast milk. And it spilled. I mean, the whole bag popped and it spilled all over the floor. And I cried because I thought, God, I worked so hard pumping that breast milk out. And it was just, I felt so stupid because I'm like, oh my God, I just wasted a whole thing of milk. And it just, it, it slipped out of my hand. It just slipped out of my hand and accidents happen. But, you know, I, I felt so shameful because I'm like, oh my God, what if I never am able to pump out another eight ounce like that, you know, or 12 ounces or whatever it is. You know, I felt so guilty. I felt shamed. I thought, God, I'm, I'm, I'm going to end up giving my kid, you know, formula for the rest of his life. And I'm a first time mom. So I had all these thoughts rolling in my head, trying to figure out why the hell I was feeling this way. And it happens. It happens to every single parent that we feel guilty. Ask yourself if, if, you know, ask yourself if your guilt is helping or hurting your kids. As a single parent, guilt that per paralyzes you can get in the way of meeting your kids' physical and emotional needs. So it's even more important that you deal with your feelings in ways that are healthy for your whole family. All the more reason to speak with a professional if the guilt you feel either isn't yours to own or is getting in the way of living your life. And there are many times that I have let guilt get in the way of living my own life. I became homeless when my son was a year old. And I'll tell you something, that created a lot of guilt. It created a lot of shame. And I know I'm not the only parent that has fallen homeless with a child. There are many people out there that have fallen homeless with a child. And we feel guilty. We feel shameful. We feel like we're the worst people on the planet because we have fall. Whatever happened, whether we lost our job or got out of a really bad situation to protect our children, you know, the guilt kind of stays with us. And... When I was homeless, you know, some of the days I was only feeding my kid peanut butter and jelly sandwiches three times a day because that's all I could afford. But at least I was feeding my kid. And, you know, as I talked to people on the street, you know, and I told them about it and they said, you know, feeding your kid peanut butter and jelly sandwiches is not the end of the world. He's, you know, some people were like, well, look at it this way. You're feeding your child. It's not like you're letting your child go hungry. So I, I had to like put those guilty feelings like behind me and realize that, you know, there is a light at the end of the channel, tunnel. I am feeding my child. 
you know, it might be peanut butter and jelly sandwiches all the time, but at least I'm feeding my child. So I had to look at it that way and um, be able to forgive myself, which is what the next thing that I'm going to be talking about, looking for tangible ways to forgive yourself. You know, we got to start forgiving ourselves. We can't be beating ourselves up. We can't beat ourselves up as parents because we work hard. We work hard and things don't go right every single day. We might have a really great day and then the next day it might be the shittiest day on the planet. But we can't beat ourselves up for having one shitty day or two shitty days or however many crappy days that we have. We just have to learn from it, forgive ourselves, and just keep moving on for the sake of not only ourselves, but for our kids. Because our kids look up to us. Our kids make us feel like we're a part of something. And so we got to put that guilt aside and say, you know what? It's just a stupid, silly day, and tomorrow's a better day. And I try to look at it that way. I try to look at it that way every single day as if I've had the worst day on the planet. And this week, I've actually had some really crazy off the wall days. But, you know, like today I woke up, I'm like, today's going to be a better day. Those last three days that I was feeling anxiety and depression through um, what I was going through, I've got to like, keep moving forward because I can't dwell on it. And as a single parent, we dwell on stuff. We dwell on stuff. I've dwelled on stuff. I still dwell on stuff from time to time, but it doesn't make us horrible people. You know what I mean? It doesn't make us horrible people that we dwell on things and make ourselves feel sorry for ourselves. We just got to be able to learn from whatever guilt that we're having and keep moving forward. If you've been beating yourself up about past decisions, be forgiving. You're allowed to make mistakes. We're all allowed to make mistakes. Every single one of us, we have made some silly mistakes in our lifetime. I have forgotten many things. And if you're a new single parent listening to this podcast and you are feeling guilty right this minute, it's okay. You are allowed to feel feelings. You're allowed to feel guilty. You're allowed to feel whatever emotions that you're going through right now because being a parent isn't perfect. You know, we're never going to expect perfect in parenthood, especially single parenthood, because we're only one person. And I keep telling my son this, that one day I am just going to turn myself into an octopus because I am, I have one child. And so when my son wants seven different things, I only have two hands. And so I tell him, I'm like, I cannot be an octopus and be in every room or do everything at one time. If I'm doing the dishes and he wants a, 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 a thing from the top shelf and then two seconds later he wants this, I'm like, can you wait to do the, you know, till I'm done doing the dishes and I, I can help you with this? And, you know, he kind of gets irritable, but then he's, he's fine after a couple of minutes because I'm like, I got to get these dishes done. I can't be in four or five places at the same time. And so it's, it's not easy. It's not easy at all. Okay, being a single parent is tough as shit. But we're tougher because we make the days happen. And even though they might not be the greatest days, you know, we'll learn from that the next day. I have left, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit of a, a background story here. When I became a single parent, I felt so guilty because, you know, when I first found out I was pregnant, I did not know if I was ready for this. I didn't, I didn't know if I was ready to be a parent. I didn't know. I, I, I took the pregnancy test and I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe this. This is crazy. I thought I had the flu. When I, I found out I was, I thought I had the flu. I'm like, I'm getting sick. I'm nauseous. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling weird. And I'm like, well, this is weird. Maybe I'm just got the stomach bug. And then I ended up at the hospital one day and, um, I did a urine sample and they said, well, Miss Updike, it looks to me like you are pregnant. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. So I made it an appointment for my first ultrasound to happen and to find out how far along I am. But, you know, 
every day before my appointment, I was feeling all sorts of guilt. I was three months newly clean from drugs and alcohol. And I asked myself, am I ready to be a mom? You know, things happen in life and we can't, you know, we can't control them. And, and, and yes, you know, um, we, we end up, a lot of women end up pregnant and, and make some crazy choices, but you know what? We're not perfect. Okay. So as myself, you know, asking myself, well, am I ready for this? Am I too selfish to say, you know, do I uh, do open adoption or, you know, because my mom was an alcoholic and I didn't want to live the life or give my child the life that my mom lived, even though that I knew I wasn't going to be that kind of parent that my mother was, but I still felt guilty in, you know, trying to figure out, well, am I ready to be a mom or am I being selfish or, you know, I had all these feelings happen to me. But when I got that first ultrasound, I was holding that picture and it was just an amazing feeling looking at a little picture of your child as this little zygote or whatever the heck it is, this little human that is as tiny as a pinto bean or whatever. And I decided that night, I said, you know what, I can do this. If I can be strong enough to get through recovery and strong enough to get through the childhood struggles that I've lived through throughout my life, I can become a parent. And it might be hard, but I can do it. And I had that motivation and determination that I could do this. And three years later, you know, my son is still with me and it's not perfect, but it's a blessing that I'm able to experience parenthood because my mom wasn't a good parent to me. And so I'm able to have that blessing and it's a beautiful thing. But don't don't beat yourself up. I mean, you know, things happen. I, I've I've forgotten the diaper bag when I brought my son home from the hospital. And uh, I was home for a week and I decided I wanted to get out for a little bit and show my son off. <laughs> and we get to Target and I forget the damn diaper bag. I'm like, oh my God, like I, I felt stupid. I felt guilty. I felt shameful because I'm like, some mom's going to judge me and somebody's going to tell me that I'm a horrible mom for forgetting the diaper bag. And lucky that somebody came into the bathroom and said, you know what? It's not the worst thing in the world that you can forget. You know, the worst thing in the world that you can forget is your baby at home. That's the worst thing in the world. So a diaper bag to me wasn't really a big deal. As long as I had my baby, that's what mattered. Um, so people made me feel better knowing that, you know, there could be worse things in the world than forgetting a silly diaper bag. But we still have that guilt and we end up beating ourselves up for it. But um, whatever choices we make, you know, we made them in the moment with the information that we had at the time. And we probably made them with the best intentions in mind, which always happens. Even if there are things you wish you could change, be gentle with yourself. Always be gentle with yourself. Don't take it so hard on yourself. I know how hard single parenting is, but man, you know, we can't change the past. And I've learned this through my recovery. I've learned this through therapy that whatever happened at that moment we can't reverse the situation. We just have to learn from it and keep moving on because that's what life's all about, my friends. And as you heal, like I talked about, you know, begin to move forward. Another thing, another little tip um, about single parent guilt, consider whether your guilt is masking anxiety or depression. Um, and that happens. It's not common for depression and anxiety to manifest or as uh, self-imposed guilt, particularly if you are starting to realize that you're feeling guilty about things that aren't yours to own. Uh, seeking professional help could accelerate your healing. Um, therapy is great. I, I have been a big believer of therapy since I got out of recovery. Now, as a child, I didn't believe in therapy, but now um, having a therapist 
helps in a very big way. It actually helps me um, with me being a single parent because of how hard single parenting is. And those single parents that are out there feeling alone, if you're listening to this podcast, you're not alone, my friends. We are all struggling. We are all going through some serious thing that, you know, we feel guilty about and it's, it's okay. It's okay to make mistakes as a single parent. We don't have all the information. As a single parent, we don't have all the information. We don't have a manual that says, well, here is what you do when you're a single parent. Read it and there's a test on Friday. No, we figure it out ourselves. The great thing about having an amazing brain is, you know, when we are a single parent is, we make our own path, our own journey, and nobody can invade that, man. Nobody can invade our own parenting path. And if people judge it, you know, let them judge because you are the best that you can be as a single parent. You are the best that you can be as a single parent. And um, nobody can tell you that you're doing something wrong because if you believe in something, you have every right to believe in whatever you believe in to raise your kids the best that they can be. Um, another little tip is fo focusing on our kids. Ask yourself what your children need from you right now. Dedicating your full attention to their emotional and physical well-being can redirect your attention in healthy ways, which I believe in that fully. If I'm having a shitty day of whatever is going on in my life, um, I, I try to make sure that I'm focusing on my son because it helps me emotionally and it redirects my attention in a healthier way instead of being angry and upset because something went wrong that day, um, you know. Allowing yourself to heal the guilt that you feel right now, whether it's warranted or n not, won't always feel as intense as it does today. Spend time writing, or wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> I lost a piece of paper there. Um, ask yourself if the guilt is helping you or hurting your kids. Um, I've asked this self. I, I've asked myself this uh, so many times if if guilt is helping or hurting my child. And um, a lot of the time I tell myself the guilt is not helping at all. Hello, how are you? Now, when we feel guilty, we, we, we are afraid that we're going to hurt our kids. And we're not hurting our kids, but the guilt is, is there. Um... As a single parent, guilt that um, as a single parent, guilt that per, per, paralyzes, you can get in the way of, um, like I said, meeting your kids' physical and emotional needs. And we have to be able to know that we can meet those. Doing things to help yourself um, not feel so guilty or, you know, it's like taking time for yourself, going for a walk, writing in a journal, um, getting your emotions out there, maybe sharing your emotions with a friend. It helps accelerate your healing as a single parent. I know it helps me because I have a best friend and her name is Shell and, and we talk all the time, all the time. And she's been there with her parenting stuff and and she's gone through some really tough tough situations in life and um you know it's nice to be able to relate to another adult who has been in some kind of situation like that um you know not every situation is the same we all go through life differently but it's nice to be able to relate to another person that has gone through some kind of crazy situation and has felt guilty about it but we've you know they've learned that you know they've been able to move on as a single parent because they don't want to keep holding that guilt in so we want to be able to uh be as healthy as we can be as parents 
Yoga helps. I love yoga. Yoga is like one of my favorite things in the world that helps with my anxiety and my depression, especially as a single parent, because there are times when I don't get to make what I had planned for the week and I have to redo my whole menu for what I'm going to make for dinner that night. And I feel guilty about that because I had planned on making spaghetti, but then in return, I ended up making pizza and I felt guilty. We feel guilty about the dumbest things, but you know what? It's okay. It's okay to feel guilty about the dumbest things, but it happens. And like I said, we're not perfect. And so my dear single parents, if you're listening to this podcast, you're not alone. And guilt is going to be there for the rest of our lives, but we have to work on it. And when you work on it, you're healing and you don't have to beat yourself up because, you know, we, we've been there. We, we understand that life can get crazy. And as a single parent, we, we, we might not have the help that other single parents have. And we're struggling to figure out how life works as a single parent. You don't have to figure that out. Just do your own thing. Make single parent happen in your own way, your own path. Don't let somebody invade you. Don't let somebody judge you for what you've done. Because kick them out. Kick them out of your path. Kick them out of your road. Say, you don't belong here. I have my own way, my own journey, my own path. I will parent how I want to raise my kids my own damn way. And nobody else should tell you how to parent your children. And I've said this many times on my live videos, on my YouTube channel, on all sorts of platforms, on my Reddit, all sorts of platforms. I have said this over and over again. Don't let somebody invade your parenting path. Just kick them out because they're not allowed on your path. You choose your own journey and your own path, and you are in control of your life. Nobody else is. So um, I hope this podcast helps a lot of my single parent friends out there. And if you're looking for more support, go to www.stairwaytosurvival.com. And I will. um, I love you, mom. I love you too, Sean. And um, that little squeaky voice in the herd that you heard was my three-year-old son. <laughs> so I hope everybody is going to have an amazing Tuesday. And um, if you're looking for more support, like I said, go to www.showwithsurvival.com and you'll find all my links there, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. So I love you, my friends, and I hope you all have a good day. Bye.